for uh, basically, typically it's a no <laughs> gi type of uh, technique. But I hit it all the time. Gi, no gi, it doesn't matter. I'm not using the gi at all, but you can hit this. It, it's, it's easy enough to hit it in the gi also. So that's why uh, I wanted everybody to be in the gi today. So I'm going to start off just the same way we've been doing. I'm going to step back. I'm going to leave one foot in so that way I can initiate my uh, knee slice here and come in. As soon as I get to this point, my hands stay on the knee until I feel comfortable here. Okay? Now, I already know that he's going to go for the underhook. So he starts to go for the underhook. I'm not really going to fight him too much. The one thing I have to be careful of is he doesn't come underneath me and try to get into the deep pass situation or sweep me. Okay? So, to, in order to block this, he starts coming for the underhook. I go right to the overhook. And when I do the overhook, I'm not trying to reach for his head, and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on him. My hands, you guys have to come over here. My hand comes through, and I just place the back of my hand on his chest, and that's where it just stays, okay? Uh, the other thing that I need to watch out for is him coming up. So he's on his elbow right now. I don't want that. So I'm just gonna reach for his hand, and just pull it out. And typically, I'll just place my hand down on his wrist. And this just keeps them down, especially if I have somebody that's fighting me pretty hard during competition and I keep coming up and every time I pull down to come up again, I come here and I just place it there. And that, that helps me out quite a bit. All right, so the things I'm going to show you, everything I'm going to show you right in this position is just going to lead to the neck. So typically I'll go for, uh, for some submissions here to ultimately uh, mask what I'm about to do as far as the choke is. So I'm going to hold this down. He's got this, uh, this underhook on me. So in order for me to reach the neck, because I don't want to force it, is I'm just going to lean out and my, the elbow pit is in his elbow. And I'm just going to push that down. Now he's got an option. He can either tap here or he can limp arm out. And then I just catch the arm here. Okay? So I just catch it on the wrist. Go back. The inside of my elbow goes on his elbow. That's why I don't go further with this whenever I'm going for this, this choke. I keep the hand here so I can apply pressure to that elbow. And that's all it takes to get that arm out. Back. So I'm here, go here, and I stop. Now, this is, this is typically how I, how I get to the head. If he keeps his arm out here, I just grab the wrist and I turn and my hand goes to the back of the head. Okay? And then my hand comes over and I gable grip. Okay? So I think what we need to do is stop right there because I want you guys to understand how to get into that position. So I come in, we're going to start here, come in, go here. He gets the underhook. Boom. I keep my hand right here at the chest. He starts coming up on the elbow. I pull him back down and I pin the wrist. I, my elbow pin is going to apply pressure to the back of his elbow. And I'm just letting it come out. A lot of times he's going to keep his elbow bent here. There's a lot of different things you can do here, but we're just going to focus on the choke. All right. So once I'm here, I let go of the wrist. I grab this wrist. I lean forward and feed here. Now I reach over and grab the gable grip. Okay? Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Alright, ready? Right. So I wanted to show everybody the setup into the Japanese necktie before we get it because all that stuff is important. Um, I want to also say that in that position there's so many submissions there too that I typically go after just to hit the Japanese necktie. I think I said that before. Here. Here. Okay, he gets the underhook. My hand comes in, back of the hand to the chest. He starts posting up. I drop him back down and pin this arm down. Now I start applying pressure to this arm. It comes out. My, see my shoulder? I'm keeping constant pressure here. I don't want him to flip that way, and I don't want him to turtle up. I switch. I turn into him with my shoulder going underneath the armpit. Once this part of my wrist hits his neck, I'm pulling it in a little bit. Here, here. Okay? 
my hand goes over, I get the gable grip. Now, this is where we ended up before. So, the next step is to place my knee down on the mat. My left knee goes on the mat. Typically, I try to place it so his head is going to be in between my knees on the ground. Okay? So I'm here, and I come here. Now, in order to get the next step, because I have to hook this leg, but he's, uh, in order to hook this leg that I just have my foot on, I'm going to have to pull it up off the ground because his knee's attached to the mat. So, I push him a little bit, and I hook and bring it here. It doesn't have to be a triangle on my legs, just over top of the other leg. Now, once I have this, I can pull it a little bit closer if I want, if I feel like it's too far away. But all you have to do is just drop your hip and your shoulder on the mat behind his head. So I'm just sitting there. When you're there, if the guy's not tapping, which he probably will, all you have to do is pull your leg back. So I'm pulling his leg to me and I'm pushing my body into his head. So it's, it's going to be hard for me to show that because <laughs> he's already tapping before, way before then. So I'm here, here. He gets the underhook, my hand goes in against his chest, I start applying pressure. Where he comes up, drop him back down, post up. He applies pressure, I grab it, switch, drop, pull in, grab the gable. Knee goes to the mat, pull him over a little bit so that leg comes up, hook, and then drop. Uh, the person doing it is not going to feel like it's a lot of pressure, but trust me, it is. All right? Yes, sir. Any questions? Does everybody want to see the how he rolls this way? Or does it get from, does it get from the sign? Yeah, everybody, okay. any questions or anything? No? Ready? Great. Right. And I drop over my hip. Am I trying to keep these two together on top of the neck, or is it okay to let one sort of... Typically, whenever I drop to my hip, the one that's on top of the head usually slides off because my chest replaces that. Okay. So as long as I can get my body behind the head and stop it, it doesn't matter if that one is on top of the head or not. Okay. And it has to fall off because I keep my elbow tight to my body, so that way I can go all the way to the shoulder on okay. the mat. Okay. Does that answer the yes. question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Anything, anybody else? All right. One one thing that I was I was seeing that was happening is being able to capture the leg. Okay. Because it's hard to capture the knees on the mat. So you have to just push them into them a little bit to make their hips come up like that. And that way you can capture the leg. All right? Uh, one other thing I want to show you guys before we go any further is how to defend somebody that's trying to reach for that head. Okay? Because it's important to understand how to defend this if somebody's trying to get on you. It also applies to darses and anything that has this type of uh, emotion coming in. So Brad's going to do it to me. This is very simple. Can I stop here? Okay, so look, everybody come to this side. So I know that the next step he's going to do, and so, some people even don't wait for this position. They'll still do it even when the guy has an underhook. In fact, I've hit the Japanese necktie when somebody had the underhook on me. It's just more difficult. Okay, so when he starts to reach for this, I have to back my elbow out. If I back my elbow out and place my elbow in his elbow pit, but connected to my body, he cannot reach for my head. This stops any dars, it stops any Japanese necktie, or, or him even just grabbing my head to advance his position. So this helps me out. It's very simple, very easy to do. When, when I'm here and he starts reaching, uh, that's all I do is bring my elbow and my head back. If he happens to catch my head right here, I just extend. Now I can't reach it, and I get my arm in there. Build my frame up on this arm because he's obviously he's wanting to choke me here. So that's a, a very simple thing to do, and that'll stop a lot of that. He'll get frustrated with that, and he won't even attempt it after that usually. That's been my experience anyway. Any questions on that?
Okay, I'm not gonna have you guys go over that. It's real simple. Just pull your elbow out and block his arm. I'm searching for that head. Any questions? No? All right, good, let's move on. All right, so here, come into this position. Use the other hook. I pin him down. I don't even wait for him to put post up this time. Here, I catch. I search for it. And I get it here. Okay, when I'm here, a lot of times there's a couple different things that can happen. He can either flatten out to his back, to his back. And then I have to release it because I can't finish it there. Or he'll try to turtle up. I can still hang on to this grip even in the turtle position. Now, from this position, I have three different options that I typically go to, to finish it from here. The first option is to go ahead and grab his leg that's closest to me with my leg here, pull him over, and lock it, and then finish it. This is a, a more, uh, this is a more solid uh, finish than the, the first one because I have his opposite leg and not the leg that's closest to the ground. You even tax right there. So it's, it's very tough to even finish this with the top leg because he'll tap before I'm trying to hang on. Okay. <laughs> so, we're going to come here, this position, trap, lock. <clears throat> here, he starts to turtle up. I let him turtle up. I keep my shoulder in his armpit so I can keep this grip. I grab his close leg, pull him over the hook, and I drop. Any questions? No, sir. Let's do it, ready? Right. I want, when I drop to the side here, I wanna keep his leg down. I don't wanna, I don't wanna drop and, and do this, okay? It's not a way to finish the choke. So keep your legs hooked, and when you drop, keep them here. This leg on the ground. All right? Okay, okay let's do it. Ready? I'm here and here, and I grab this leg, and I bring it to me, just like this. And now um, my shoulder is underneath his armpit, so I can push him over easily. I come here, now I settle, and I lock. Now I can cook him here for a little bit too. I can put a lot of pressure on him, make him want to tap at this position. I can pull him in. I can do a lot of crazy things to him. Squeeze. Once I have him in where I want him, I just drop. They're saying like you don't, you don't just grab it and fall. Right, don't grab, don't grab it, push over and fall because you're gonna miss it. Push him over, settle down. Make sure that your leg's in the right spot and then drop your hip over. This is not something that you have to hit fast. You can hit, you just take your time to do it, okay? Yes. All right, so I wanna go over a couple other options from this turtle position, okay? So that's one option, is just pushing them back over, catching the leg and finishing it like that. Uh, another option that we have here is um, I can go ahead and sit out and then go right for the dart stroke. So I'm gonna step up like this. My hand is gonna go to the back of the neck. I'm gonna sit out, lock it, pull him over, capture the leg. Oops, I so again, here and here. I step this leg up, I sit through, and hold it nice and tight to you. Slide this up, bring it back. Let's uh, walk in towards Push the leg, then. So, one thing I wanna just say about that choke is make sure that when you start to get this choke here, obviously you wanna have him tied to you, otherwise he's gonna go like this. Okay? So you wanna have, I typically keep my thigh against that arm too, so that way I can feel it coming and I can block it. Okay? So now, when I get ready to do this, this hand is gonna push on the back of the head, 
slide up. I don't want to keep my hand here. I want to bring it to his other armpit. He's already about to tap. And then I pull him over. Okay? Any questions? Yeah. Does it matter which leg you catch? Nope. Or? Does not matter. Some, most of the time, they'll tap before I even catch a leg. Can you do it one more time? Yeah. <laughs> Brad's rolling with two legs. All right, so I'm here. So typically, you know, the first technique or the first option, I should say, was stepping this leg up and capturing the leg, right? This time, I'm gonna step this leg up. I'm gonna sit out, hold this tight, grab the dart grip, bring my hand to the far uh, armpit, and push into him. Capture the leg. Okay? Any other questions? No? Oh, great. great. What you want to have is your wrist bone in, into your arm like this. This is what you want to have. That way you can wrap your hand around the tricep. If you start getting your fingers on the bicep, it's going to slip off. So you want to ultimately try to, to target the grip with the wrist bone in the elbow. Okay? So, uh, I'm here and I see a lot of people, what they're doing is they're staying up here, which does not give me enough length. So I want to drop my shoulder underneath the armpit, that way it gives me enough length here. Okay? I sit out, and when I sit out, I can hold it. I don't have to, I don't have to let go and do this. It, it's possible to do that, but if you're worried about him getting away and you want to hold him in tight so he doesn't come up on top, just keep that gable grip. Now I'm just going to slide this here and bring it over. But I'm just going to slide it up across the head. Okay? That makes sense? Yes, sir. All right, because I see a lot of people not being able to get the grip uh, because they're not, they're not low enough into the armpit, too. All right. Okay. Um, any questions about anything you guys are doing? No. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. Same position. So the third option here is something I came across recently. Vernon uh, shared something with me, and so I started using it the past few days, and it's a very, very <coughs> viable option. So I started incorporating that into one of my options for this position. So. You're here, okay? And you got a guy that's it's really bassy. You know, he has a wide base, like Vernon. He's a judo guy, so he, he stays here and he's locked in. It's very, very hard to do anything with him. So I start pulling him over, I can't. I start sitting out, I can't get this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my knee inside, right here. And I'm gonna keep him against my shin. I'm gonna sit down and throw my leg up over top of his back and finish. It's called the Texas uh, Texas necktie. So again, <laughs> so that you said that I got the gable grip. I step my knee up on the inside of this arm here against his head. I sit down and throw my leg over top of the back, and then I extend my leg and then pull my hands in. So you're extending the left leg. Yeah, the, the, the shin. Okay. Yeah, so I'm trying to, you can't see it because, but I'm trying to go like this. Extend this. You're pushing that into his neck. Yeah. Gotcha. And it sucks. This. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you do it, it again? Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. He did this to me on Friday, so. A lot. So I'm here. I'm trying to pull him over. He's being really difficult. So I'm going to set my, uh, my left leg, set my knee inside my arm, and pull his head against my shin. It's important to have no, no room here, no room for him to escape. So I, I, I pull it nice and tight. And then I sit down and throw my leg over top of the back so he can't roll out. And then I finish. If I don't put my leg on top of the back, roll. he can do that. But yeah, I'll just roll. Typically, what happens 
He's like, he'll sit down and he rolls over top. And then he comes over. Alright, one more question. Can I see how you get the leg over without losing the grip? Yeah. So I'm here. I just step up. Your right leg. Oh. Yeah. I sit down with my butt. Oh, okay. You feel like kind of go out and over here. Yeah. Sit first, drop That's, your leg over the top. Yeah. 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 Sit, okay. sit to your hip. Don't try to bring the leg up with your butt in the air. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing I'm doing too that you guys aren't seeing is I'm keeping this leg out, outside a little bit. So I'm here. I bring it in. And I'm here. Mm. Right? That way when I sit, I can go and miss his hips and over. Make sense? Yeah. Any questions? All right, ready? Put it on the back because you're just trying to stop the guy from rolling over his shoulder, right? So as long as you catch something, like his leg or his ankle or, or whatever, or his back, and he can't roll. So when I do this, I set this up and I sit down. If I can't get my leg over top, maybe he's crowding me. I just hook this. And now I finish. Okay, so I'm just hooking the lower leg with my outside. Can you leg. push your foot in. Or not? I just stepped it over it. No, no, yes. Yeah, the forward. chin you push your foot in. Yeah, yeah, just like the same way as you finished. The only difference from before and now is this to this. Okay. That's it. Everything else is all the same. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. You guys want to go ahead and try that? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, ready? Right. Keep the head versus just trying to muscle the head. But initially, when I was first doing this to try to to try to actually get it in competition, I was using a technique to bring the head closer to me. So the technique that I was using, get on your side. The technique that I was using was as long as I could see my fingertips on the other side of the head, then I could grab it and I could get the darts. So I was searching for the darts, but he knows what's going on, so he's extending his body back. So as long as I can see my fingertips, I'm just gonna grab my fingertips in an S grip, and then I'm gonna rotate them towards me, like this. Now I'm gonna pull him in, and then I'm here at the gate. Okay, so it's just like this. You got your right hand down if I'm going on this direction, if I'm on the other side of the my left hand. The left hand is, or right hand is down. The left hand comes over and grabs like this. And then I rotate both of them like this to try to bring my elbows together. Okay? So it's just like this. All right. And then this hand just goes over top to the gable. So, so much up here. And all I can see is my fingertips because he's extending his body out. I reach over and grab my fingers. I pull them in. Now you can sit here for a while. This is not going to burn out your uh, forearms. I think everybody that's competed understands when you compete, then the first match, your forearms always burn, especially if you're gripping a lot. You know, This won't burn out your forearms at all because you're not using any strength here. It's just your finger grips. So here, grab, turn. Pull, hook, and then you're back to where we started, okay? So you guys want to give that a shot? That, that helped me out a lot when I was first starting out <coughs> to get the head closer to me so I could actually finish this stuff. And then like I said, I switched it up and started using more uh, setups and, and submission attempts to get to the head. You know, um, okay, so let's try that. Ready? Okay, so we talked about being here, him giving the underhook. So obviously, you know, I use this, this underhook that he's given me to try to lift, make him lip arm his arm, uh, make him uh, get his arm out of there, right? So I post this down and I start coming here. If, if he wants to leave it there, I'll go ahead and submit him with the straight arm uh, here. When he pulls this out, I talked about trapping it. I'm also trapping his elbow onto my chest. Okay, now I grab, I lock. So now I have kind of like a Kimura lock here. 
So I had this, and before what we did was we grabbed, and we went to here. But this time I'm going to grab this, and then this hand is going to go and grab my other wrist here. Mm -hmm. Now my shoulder is on the back of this tricep, so I'm going to place it on the mat. Here. I didn't want him to tap yet. <laughs> so I place his shoulder on the mat because I want to isolate his shoulder. Then I just raise his hand up. Okay? So this is like a, a Kimura, Kimura position. But I'm just, I'm isolating his arm by using my shoulder and placing it on the mat. Here. Okay? The other thing I like to do here too, is if I have this here, then I'll go ahead and I'll drop my hand to here, and then I'll, place, I'll do a wrist lock. So my chest is blocking his elbow. Anytime you're doing wrist locks, you need to have the elbow blocked to make it effective. So I want to block his, his elbow with my chest, and I typically just push it to the ground. I grab the knuckles, and then I push it to the ground. Okay? The other thing, he, he typically what happens here is he'll extend his arm. And I just push my chest down. So I get an arm lock there. This hand, I keep it posted. I can try to go for his head. He extends back. I place my knee on his forearm and bring this up. Tap. All right. So there's a lot of different things that I do here just to distract him from going to the head. But if he wants to give those to me, I'll take them. Because <laughs> it's a lot easier to do this than it is to yeah, bam, you know, fall over, or this, you know. I've, I've submitted several people in competition with that one. Just place it here. All right, the other thing that I like to do here is if they're giving me a, a lot of uh, problems, they're extending out, I'm not able to get, catch anything, I'll grab a hold of the inside of this gi, here, this, this grip, the cross collar grip, and then I'll step this leg back, hook this leg, and fall over. To attack the legs or to attack this arm here. So I can typically, those of you that can do knee bars, I'd like to hit a knee bar from this position, <laughs> but it's not your, your standard knee bar. I'm not, I'm not facing my belly towards his knee. I'm grabbing his heel here and I'm pulling it this way while I'm pushing my knee that way. And I'm using the grip on his collar to hold him into me. So I'm extending by squeezing my knees together. And I hook his heel and pull it this way. Okay? The other thing that happens is he pushes that leg over top. I'll bring it over here. To like block me from doing this. He'll kick my arm. So I just grab a hold of it. Ankle lock here. You also have a Texas Cloverleaf. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I already Sorry. 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 <laughs> then you have a Texas Cloverleaf. To go with your necktie. To go with the necktie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to point out something else here, too. Wait, I have a question. You said you can also do it to attack that arm sometimes. Yeah. Like, what do you do? Uh, that's where I'm going. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Who's this is again? <laughs> so, she's, he's got an underhook. Maybe he doesn't, you know, or maybe he's blocking this. So, I typically, if he, I, I feel like he, you know, he knows what, what I typically do, and uh, he's good at defending a lot of this stuff. I'll reach my hand in and grab a cross collar here. My elbow pit is still on the elbow. So now when I, I step over, I just raise my elbow up. His hand is trapped behind my back, and I can finish him. He thinks I'm going for the legs, because I go like this. Start messing with them. Yeah, no escape. Flexible elbows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know that was a lot, and I uh, I wanted just to show you guys uh, how much stuff was right there in that little space. Typically, when I get to the knee slice position, I hunt all those things, and I try to go for the head, but I set it up with all those other things. All right. So, huh? Yeah, you can do that. You want to see it on somebody else? Right. Okay. So, I'm here. Can you hit that door one while you're sitting there real quick? That door where you're trapping that arm? Yeah. Yes, sir.
You here? Yes, sir. So I'm here to trap it. I place I replace this one with this one. And then I grab my wrist. I push the shoulder down to the mat. And then I raise the hands up. Okay. So it's all locked in here. Yeah. So it's like this. I just <coughs> alright. So the knee bar, I like I like to have the underhook when I go for that knee bar, like this, so that way I can tack the arm too. But if I don't have it, I don't care. I can go here, here, and I can hold this and step over. But I just I want to have some type of grip. But I, I prefer to have this so I can have an option over there in case you know he, he's good at defending legs. So. I'm going to get this cross collar grip. I'm going to back step over, but I'm only going to back step over and put my knee on the back side of his knee. Here. And then leave your arm there. Yeah. And then I come here. Are you hooking his other leg of your right foot? Yeah, you are. Yes, I'm, I'm hooking that. Because what he's going to try to do is get, that, get this off. So I hook it. And then I hook it again. Can you grab it on top too? Is that? Uh, I typically don't do this. You can. It weaves it a little bit better. I like to do this here. Yes, it's tight. And so I can squeeze. Yeah. But sometimes I'll keep it out so I can use this to play. All right. Yeah. And then to finish this, I always keep my knees tight on arm bars, knee bars. Anytime you want to isolate joints. Pinch your knees on those joints. Then I take this hand and I go this way. Both. Yep. And then I raise my elbow up to finish this. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> I know there's a lot, man. And I know that you, know, you guys that are first starting off. <coughs> You know, all these things that I'm, I'm showing you, you're probably only going to remember like two or three things, one thing from the seminar. But just keep trying it. Because when I first started off, I saw so much stuff and I was, I took that and I, I tried it once and I was like, this will never work for me. And then I didn't see it. I didn't try it. I didn't even attempt it for the longest time. And then like two years, three years later, I did it again. And now those are all the things that I do constantly. So um, just keep trying it. If it feels awkward at first, it's not you. Everybody goes through that. Just keep doing it and it'll get familiar. All right? Any, anybody have any questions for me? Text code relief. I can get you after the or not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 As long as you don't, as long as you don't slip the knee bar, the text is code relief is legal. So I did it to Daniel and then he's, he said, the, the, well, the other thing that you want to be careful of is reaping. Okay, so with, with uh, IBJJF. Well, it's like illegal. No, you can also like, kind of slip into that 80 20 hook as well. One, one tournament I know that you cannot do the, the Texas Clover Week leap is US Crackle. You used to be able to. It's a straight ankle off with both ankles. You can do it in an advanced no gi, mm -hmm. but you cannot do it in the gi. The reason why it's not it's not a twisting lock, but somebody complained that it was too, it looked too much like a heel hook, and so they decided to take it out. But um, it, it's not. It's just I think they wanted just to make sure that everybody, you know, everybody had wasn't worried about it being a twisting lock or whatever. So, um, but it, it, as far as IBGDF goes, uh, you need to be very careful about reaping because they're not going to warn you. They're going to just disqualify you. So you got to be really careful about that. Other tournaments, they'll warn you. They'll say, hey, if you're reaping, and they'll push your foot off or whatever. You know, whatever. But uh, in, um, in IBJJF, it'll be, it'll, it'll, uh, it just takes one time. So I'm here. I want to go here. As long as I stay above his knee, I'm not reaping. Right? And when I get out here and his knee starts twisting in, that's reaping. So I like to, anytime I'm doing any IBJJF, 
I stay up closer to his body this way, just to make sure that they don't call him. Because every every breath is different. Mm -hmm. Every you know, some things some things certain reps let, let slide, and other things they don't. And some when it comes to the reaping rules may not know. Exactly. And that's a problem. Well, it looks like enough like a reap to them, it's a reap. Yeah. Yeah, and once they the once they call you for something, that's it. There's no arguing with them, and you just make things worse, they'll put you out. Also, fair warning, Brad can push John into the reaping position, and they'll still DQ John. Okay. Exactly. That's what, what else escape does he have from the position? Just to almost get to there, right? Yeah, it's tough to escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once I have this this position here, and I have a hold of this, like I like to I say, uh, have a grip on his upper body, <coughs> so he can't do a lot of things, right? And he can't push me back this way. I can keep him, I can keep him in, right? So, just uh, want to make sure you guys are aware of that as far as the reaping stuff goes. Okay. Okay. Do you reap with the rebar? You don't reap it. You say, right? Yeah. You say, right? yeah. If you want for the rebar, they call you for that. Just to tell the problem is correct. Yeah, exactly. If you back step past from top up guard, mm -hmm. that's, that's not reaping. No, it's not. You can go straight and sit straight up and you the yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I, like I said, I know that was a lot of stuff, but just keep attempting these things. You guys can all, I'm on Facebook and most of you guys have my number. So if you guys run into questions or you have problems with something, or you got some video of you trying to do it and it didn't work for you and you need some advice on it, just send it to me or text me or uh, let me know and I'll try to answer it for you. Yeah. Private so is good. That's the best. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Any questions? No? All right, guys. Let's roll. Ready? Great. Right.